Hello friends, in today's episode we will try to identify some common leaf patterns of discoloration and distortion in various micro and macronutrient deficiencies and finally one single universal solution or fertilizer to treat these problems coming up. Before we start displaying the various leaf patterns, you must understand some basics in order to diagnose this problem of nutrient deficiencies in plants and start the right treatment to save your plants. Because directly jumping into adding too many supplements can burn or kill your plant. Plant nutrients fall into two categories, macronutrients and micronutrients. Macronutrients are those elements that are needed in relatively larger amounts. They include the three major ones that is nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium that is NPK and also sulfur, calcium and magnesium. Micronutrients are those elements that plants need in very small amounts like iron, boron, manganese, zinc, copper, molybdenum etc. Most of the times except in container gardening these nutrients may be present in the soil. So, before adding supplements, you have to diagnose your condition by checking these three problems or factors. Number one, the problem may be with the roots, not able to absorb or uptake these nutrients. This can be due to root disease or improper watering because these nutrients are taken up by the roots only in the presence of moisture. Then on number two, soil pH may not be right. Most plants need a pH of around 6.0 for proper absorption of nutrients with the roots. Having this little pH meter will certainly help you rectify this problem. You can find related videos on altering the soil pH by using natural methods from links in description. Then on number 3, pest attacks which can sometimes resemble the patterns of nutrient deficiencies, especially the sucking pests like aphids. Make sure you thoroughly examine your plants. Now having said that, let's jump into identifying the various leaf patterns of discoloration and distortion and diagnose this problem. But always keep in mind that each plant variety is different and may display different symptoms. And also the damaged leaves may not come back to normal after treatment but the new leaves will certainly come out healthy and lush after treatment. Now let's start with nitrogen deficiency. You will notice complete yellowing of the older leaves, generally at the bottom of the plants. The younger leaves are often healthy and green. This is because nitrogen is a mobile nutrient which moves up from the lower parts of the plant to the growing ends as a compensatory mechanism. And hence the older leaves donate nitrogen and show complete yellowing including the veins and the entire surface. The solution to this is simply adding a good nitrogen rich compost like the decomposed cow dung or horse dung. But before adding this, please rule out the problems of improper watering and soil pH that we already discussed. Then on number 2, calcium deficiency. Here the new leaves are affected and may show yellowing, distortion and even burn tips due to necrosis or the death of the tip tissues. Blossom and rot disease seen in tomatoes and squashes is the best example of this. We have discussed this problem and treatment in detail in my previous episode. Then on number 3, Magnesium Deficiency. Magnesium is also a mobile nutrient and hence the older leaves first turn yellow at the edges and the surface that is called intervenal chlorosis meaning yellowing between the leaf veins. The veins as you can see stay green giving the leaf a marbled appearance. Remember, magnesium is the central most atom in the chlorophyll molecule which imparts green color to the leaf. Foliar spraying or watering the plant with 1 teaspoon Epsom salt per liter of water will give great results. Then on number 4, iron deficiency. Iron is an immobile nutrient and hence cannot be carried up to the younger leaves from the older leaves for compensation. So the leaf yellowing is first evident at the tips or the younger leaves. The pattern is similar to magnesium that is the intervenal yellowing. This is actually a common pattern and most often due to alkaline soil pH which prevents proper absorption of iron by the roots. Hence it's also called as lime induced chlorosis. The treatment for this is actually rectifying the soil pH to around 6 if it's alkaline. Another method to bypass this problem is foliar spray of a micronutrient solution or even compost tea like how we have done in our previous episodes. 
Related videos can be found in description links below. Then on number 5, Phosphorus and Potassium Deficiencies. These are very much similar to each other and the plants show stunted growth plus leaf chlorosis like leaves turning darker or even purplish. But this is difficult to identify and depends on the type of plant. Isolated potassium deficiencies usually exhibit yellowing starting at the tip or the margin of the leaf with the center being still green. Last but not the least, you must be aware of a condition called yellow vein chlorosis. Here only the leaf veins turn yellow while the rest of the leaf shows normal green color. This usually happens in winter or the dormancy period due to reduced nitrogen uptake by the roots from the soil in low temperatures. Well, now the universal treatment solutions for all these problems. You have two options. First one is making the universal cocktail fertilizer mix. You can check this link circled right here to learn how to make this organic mixed fertilizer rich in all nutrients. And the second option is vermicompost which is rich in almost all micronutrients. Adding a handful of vermicompost every 15 days will keep your plants healthy and high yielding. Please hit a thumbs up if you found this video helpful. Do comment below with your feedback and queries and consider subscribing if you are new to this channel. Happy gardening!